I see some minimal relevance if a week or two before this incident, he gets into a fight, he's the aggressor, and he does some physical damage to somebody. Do you see that as being relevant? Do you see that as actually being an important factor in whether or not he started this fight and whether George Zimmerman had a right to defend himself? I think the most a judge could reasonably do here is have the records brought to her and to review them in an in-camera hearing to just give the defense unbridled access is really outrageous because they will misuse the information, they'll put it out in the media, they'll put it on Facebook. I don't. I know the DA moved for a gag order against the defense. That, to my knowledge, they haven't gotten it yet. Uh, the defense is just playing games at this point, and I say that as a defense lawyer. Okay, now I do want to talk about social media because it's become such an important tool both for prosecution and defense. We have another case where the prosecution, it is social media which led to Sarah Jones actually being charged. So in this case, is the idea that they will find something via text or in a Facebook a, a conversation immediately before this this incident, this assault with Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman, which could explain what Trayvon Martin was thinking at the time. Is that is that what they're going for? It's not only what Trayvon Martin was thinking. The primary, I think, impetus behind the social media um, search by the defense is for potential witnesses to impeach them going forward. Now, there's a there's an they didn't release a lot of details because there's a juvenile girl who is a witness in this case that is, from what the defense says, a star witness for the prosecution. And her story might be not accurate and her social media posts or her Twitter posts right afterwards might stand in direct contradiction to what she told police. So these are what the defense are trying now to show Now I here. find, Mr. Sheen, I find stuff like that extremely relevant. So we're not talking about dirtying up the victim here. We're talking about a witness whose post may be in direct contradiction to what she has told the police of her accounts of the incident. Do you agree with that, that that's something that's relevant and should be explored? By that logic, I could get the Facebook posts of every police officer who testifies against one of my clients. I'm not saying that's, not necessar I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but I could subpoena everybody I could subpoena every Facebook record of every witness in every case saying, I want the Facebook records to see if there's some inconsistency. That is a, that is a Pandora's box that we never, ever should open. There are some, as Ryan said, there are some privacy concerns here. <laughs> Although I have to admit, Facebook is the least private social media Well, I mean, how can you claim site. privacy when you... When you Share with the world pictures of your kids and where you're going and what you ate last night. And how can you then say, oh, and by the way, we're allowed to disseminate it, but you're not allowed to have it. I, There's also I, I don't think you can have it two ways with social media. May I have, in every case, may I have the Facebook postings of every witness to see if there's any inconsistency between what's on Facebook and what they told the police. 